This man has been cultivating one species of grass for 20 years. He inspects the conditions and monitors its growth every day. This grass is one of the more plain looking of the 35,000 species of plant found in China. It was domesticated over 10,000 years ago, but nowadays, few actually know its name. Its descendants have developed new appearances and are found worldwide. Growing more than 10,000 years apart, they share the same origin, yet they look completely different from each other. If they could think like we do, would they ponder questions like, where did we come from? Where are we going? Infants of all species receive the best care from their families because they are the future of their species. Before infants are ready to taste all the delicacies the world has to offer, they need to start with something easy to digest. Yeah? Rice cereal has been widely recommended as a start of an infant ready to eat solid food. Highly nutritious and safe to eat, rice has become the first thing that infants taste after weaning worldwide. Mankind talks about grains of rice, but to the rice itself, these grains are seeds, its children and the continuation of its life. After being nourished by water, the seed is ready to grow. The seedling breaks free from the chaff and a new cycle of life begins. In the beginning, the seedling has to rely on nutrients stored within the seed. It must grow enough leaves before these nutrients are exhausted.
after a few days. Although they are only several centimetres high, these seedlings have already put out roots to absorb water and grow on leaves for photosynthesis and energy conversion. These new lives are already independent. The seeds have completed their mission. More than 10,000 years ago, the ancestor of rice was still a wild grass, now known as wild rice. Plants by nature do everything they can to protect their seeds. The seeds of the wild rice turn brownish black when they ripen and then quickly detach themselves from the plant and fall to the ground to keep themselves safe from hungry animals. As well as hiding itself, the seed can also fight back. The spikes on its head seem ever ready to cut the throat of its enemies. These sharp pointed barbs help attach the seed to a passing animal, giving it a free ride. This action is driven by the instinct to reproduce and also the ambition to stake claim to a large territory. This was what attracted the attention of mankind more than 10,000 years ago and transformed it into the domesticated rice we know today. The seeds of domesticated rice have lost their prickles and just wait for people to harvest them instead of falling to the ground. If we put ourselves in the rice's position, growing this way has put its seeds in danger and forces it to rely on mankind's protection. But rice chose to trust humans and became a partner of mankind. People no longer see rice as wild grasses. Rice is now seen as a crop and a friend with whom one can explore new territories. It was not easy for rice to leave its natural habitat. Marshes are unusual environments. Most plant roots will rot when saturated in water due to a lack of oxygen. Wild rice happens to be one of the few plants that can survive in marshes. After living in such an environment for thousands of years, it has become highly dependent on water. This dependency on water made rice transplanting a painstaking task people would need to take its entire habitat along if they wanted it to move with them. The crested ibis, under state protection in China, preferred to live in wetlands. Drawn by the clean water of the paddy fields, they have moved to make their homes nearby. More than 
6,000 years ago, paddy fields started appearing in this vast land. Each year, rice takes at least 100 days to reach maturation, and farmers flood their fields with fresh water to turn them into a suitable home for rice. Paddy fields enabled rice to move with the people and become footprints left by the travels of mankind and rice as they expanded their territory worldwide. People built canals in Italy to channel water from the River Po to the paddy fields. Paddy fields are also found in Madagascar, Africa. From its origins in China, rice is now cultivated in 113 countries worldwide. Forever changing the local landscape. More than 1,300 years ago, some of the northern tribes of China travelled south and settled in what now is Yunnan province. The local people refused to share the precious fresh water from the valley. If they wanted to survive, the newcomers would be forced to try their luck in higher places. Men could climb mountains on foot, but would rice be able to adapt to the environment up there? Plants that manage to survive here have developed unique strengths over millions of years. Some have powerful roots that can absorb every bit of moisture from the soil. Some have dense foliage to absorb more light. Some grow on strong trees. But what could rice rely on? When those early people first attempted to grow rice in the mountains, they realised the huge challenge they were facing. They would need to find a large amount of water to irrigate the fields on the riverless mountain top. The people living here are still grateful to the mountains who accepted them. Every year before they plant the rice, they sing out their gratitude to the forest. In their simple belief system, there is a mysterious connection between trees and water. Science has since enabled people to discover the secret of water that is hidden in the laws of nature. Tiny droplets of water escape gravity in the form of a rising mist. And then they settle on the plants as dew.
People living here built irrigation channels manually. These channels collect and distribute the precious water that flows out from the forest. These people have constructed more than 4,000 channels in the last 1,000 years, which has created a marsh-like environment on the mountain where the rice can grow. The mountain slope has been cut into numerous tiny platforms, which are then flooded and turned into paddy fields. Little by little, rice took root here. These terrace rice fields form an ecosystem which has become part of the water cycle. This ecosystem would collapse without the trees and grasses around them to conserve water. Trees still occupy more than 75% of this mountainous area. Mother Nature made room for humans and their rice. And humans have kept the ecosystem working well by only taking what they need. Farmers labor in the fields, giving thanks to the mountains for taking them in and praying for a bumper harvest. Humans and plants do not exploit each other in agrarian societies. Instead, they help each other and live in harmony. Just over a month later, the seedlings have grown into robust youngsters, jostling for space. The paddy field is becoming increasingly crowded. But there is no more space to accommodate the new stems and leaves. It seems that a ruthless war is unavoidable. Luckily, the farmers know exactly how to solve this problem after a millennium of experimentation. They start transplanting the seedlings to the main field with optimum spacing, giving them enough room to grow. Transplanting is tedious and time-consuming work, and it's also a risky move. The seedlings are soaked in water before being transplanted. This is the key to their survival. The seedlings don't yet realize they've been uprooted. Their leaves are still synthesizing sugars using water, but this is running low. A race for survival begins. The mountain path is steep and the seedling's new home is still far away. Hurry, climb faster. Better stop and water them so the seedlings can hold on a bit longer.
Their spacious new home makes it worth taking that trip in the scorching sun. The seedlings settle down and breathe a sigh of relief. They can now grow freely. A month later, the seedlings have grown to occupy almost the entire area, turning this whole place into a kingdom of rice paddies. But danger lurks in these seemingly peaceful fields. This time, the enemy has a new face. Wild rice, the ancestor of modern rice, was once just seen as grass. But that changed after wild rice was domesticated and became a staple food. Common grass, on the other hand, became mankind's enemy. Farms weeded out of the fields determined to get rid of any plants that might threaten the rice crop. But the grass is not giving in. In a war, the worst enemy is someone who can turn invisible. Common grasses have evolved a resemblance to rice, which in biological terms is called mimicry. Taking on the same look as rice, they boldly invade the rice's territory and steal its resources. The only difference between the two is that rice has white ears, which are almost imperceptible in such large fields. This gives the grass the perfect disguise. Farmers actually triggered this evolution by trying their hardest to eradicate common grasses from the paddy fields year after year. Some young grass plants have evolved to appear just like rice seedlings to avoid being uprooted. They only show their true form when they're approaching maturity. By then, their seeds have already been dispersed across the fields before they're cleared out. Survival of the fittest. Mankind took over the role of nature in rice cultivation, but our strategies make the enemy stronger too. Farmers and their rice fight the same enemies and share the same hope. The seeds germinate in spring. The rice's lifespan is only a few short months. It's midsummer now. The clock is ticking and the rice plants are already feeling the pressure to reproduce. Around 70 days after germination, a new energy is growing restless inside the stems. Panicles start to emerge. 
itching to break free from their casing. Each panicle is filled with densely packed florets. Although they're less than one centimetre long, these husks are cradles of new life. The high temperature and humidity at midday triggers the reproductive phase. Flowers burst out from the florets, each less than a centimetre. These flowers are the embodiments of hope for both farmers and their rice. There are six anthers in each tiny flower. Where pollen grain is stored, these contain the sperm cells and must find an egg to fertilise as soon as possible. Meanwhile, the stigma, which is smaller than a sesame seed, stands up, eagerly awaiting the pollen grains. The pollen grains are released and must act quickly. It's a tricky job, getting pollen grain to fall on the tiny stigma. The pollen grains must seize their chance before the drooping anthers pass the stigma. The window for fertilization is a single hour. Of course, rice doesn't leave the success of fertilization to pure luck. There are as many as 12,000 pollen grains stored in one flower and strength is found in numbers. Luckily, one pollen grain is enough for fertilization. This flower has completed her mission. For thousands of years, rice flowers have been depositing pollen from anther to stigma by themselves and have secured the survival of their species without the help of pollinators. We call this process self-pollination. However, this well-designed mechanism doesn't always guarantee success. Rice has also tasted the bitterness of failure against the unpredictable force of nature. The six anthers of this flower have just emerged, but they are waving in the breeze instead of drooping over the stigma. Mother Nature has played a cruel joke on this flower. Her anthers are already empty. As a self-pollinating plant, a lack of pollen means she will never reproduce. Yet she still blooms and waits, as her instinct tells her to. In fact, she's not the only one waiting. The rice plants in this field are all pollenless. They are all standing there patiently, waiting.
the wind begins to blow, carrying with it large amounts of fresh pollen. Where did the pollen come from? Planted among the pollenless rice plants are rows of fertile rice plants. Wind generated by drones disperses the pollen from the fertile plants to the infertile ones. Why did the farmers plant fertile and infertile rice plants together in one field? What the farmers are carrying out here is the acclaimed practice of breeding hybrid rice. Hybrid rice combines the genetic advantages of its parent varieties, but the odds of natural hybridization are one in 10,000. So scientists decided to take things into their own hands. In the 1960s, Chinese agronomists such as Yuan Longping scoured the country to find a naturally infertile wild rice variety, eventually locating one in Hainan province. Hybrid rice was successfully bred by combining eggs from infertile varieties and sperm cells from fertile ones. Hybrid rice technology was invented in China and has been successfully applied in more than 40 countries worldwide, safeguarding food security against continuous population growth. These peaceful paddies are the curbstones lining mankind's road to salvation and bear witness to mutual cooperation. After pollination, the rice crops enter the final stage of their life cycle. For them, this is the season of goodbyes. Leaves are first to leave the stage. Starting from the bottom, one by one, leaves stop working and start to wither. As the 13th or 14th leaf drops off, energy is saved for the growing seeds. Only the top remains. The sugars made in these leaves through photosynthesis are being transported straight to the fertilized panicles. The sugars are then converted to starch and stored, which will later be used to feed the next generation. In about 45 days, hundreds of ears of grain, light suitcases packed by a mother for her children about to travel far away, are gradually filled with starch. The whole plant turns yellow, including the panicles, the leaves and the stems. She is saving all the energy for her seeds. Winter is coming and she will not survive the cold winds and snow. She can only hope that her seeds will grow into new plants next spring as an extension of herself. The fate of the rice crop is beyond her control. It is now the harvest season for farmers who have labored all year, but this signals death for the plants.
The paddy fields are deserted after harvest. The rice stubble is left to wither. The life of a rice crop seems to be completely under mankind's control. These plants are born together, bloom together, and then meet their final end. But life always has its own agenda. New life starts to sprout out of the dry stems. People may have taken away their seeds, but not their desire to live on. These little seedlings are still weak and don't stand much chance against the coming winter. But there's a strong will hidden inside their vulnerability. Maybe they will manage to survive a mild winter. As long as there's hope, they will never give up. Instead of falling to the ground and growing into new plants, most of the seeds that are harvested are separated from their husks and given a new purpose in life. Rice is rich in carbohydrates and protein. which provides an important source of energy after it is cooked and eaten as part of a staple diet. Eating plain rice is a staple food. People have developed different rice dishes. The Dong people who live in the Moon Mountain region of Guizhou province have a traditional dish, which is made by marinating fish and rice. The lactic acid produced by the fermentation of the rice starch. Gives the fish a brand new flavor after three months marination. This secret method of preserving fish has spread to many cultures that have been shaped by rice and has been established in the common diet. Before rice was introduced to Japan, people there mainly subsisted on fishing and hunting. Narazushi, which means matured sushi, is the most primitive form of sushi. It shares the same cooking method that has been passed down by the ancestors of the Dong people. The fermented fish is prickled with raw rice, which gives the fish a special sour flavor. As time went on, rice cemented its important position in the Japanese diet. Narazushi was gradually replaced by modern sushi. Cooked rice is mixed with vinegar to give it that sour flavor. It is believed that Japanese people's preference for tart tasting food was shaped by their long history of eating narazushi. Sushi, made with fresh rice and seafood, is the perfect food tour to represent a culture nurtured by rice in the sea. Rice, in its various forms, acts as a vital source of energy for people in many different regions. It is now planted and cultivated worldwide. 
and has evolved a tolerance for high altitude, excessive water, alkali soil and other unfavourable environments. It is estimated that more than 140,000 varieties of rice are cultivated worldwide. However, is this the type of life that rice really wants? Something has invaded the neatly planted paddy fields. These plants, which resemble domesticated rice, are taller and stronger. Are they a new variety developed by mankind? What makes the farmers look so concerned? This phenomenon has been noticed around the world. These new plants show characteristics that go against human requirements, prompting scientists to intervene. They found these plants are a mutant variety of domesticated rice and named it weedy rice. The seeds of weedy rice are quite similar to those of domesticated rice but they are more rebellious in character. Some of them have grown prickles on top like wild rice, trying to fend off potential enemies. When the wind blows, the seeds fall off the parent plant and hide in the fields, waiting for their chance to germinate the following year. Such characteristics make weedy rice an unwanted variety in the eyes of farmers. The mutations that appear in weedy rice are the results of plant evolution, an innate instinct passed down from wild rice. Like the life of wild rice, plant evolution is often random and chaotic and seems unpredictable. But all kinds of evolution share the same goal, which is to prepare the plant against all possible hazards. Farmers see weedy rice as the black sheep of the family, but you could also call it a selfless hero, pioneering new ways to enable the reproduction and preservation of their species. Rao Kai Shi has been living here since he discovered wild rice in Dongsheng County, Jiangxi Province. Walls have been built around the wild rice to keep animals and people away from the already shrinking area of wetland. We have not yet been able to decipher the secrets hidden inside the wild rice. So by allowing it to explore new possibilities under our protection, we will leave the mystery for future generations to solve. Rice was domesticated from a wild grass and the wildness left in them is breaking all boundaries. When a seed falls into the soil, it can grow panicles in just a few months, carrying hundreds of seeds. Each seed repays mankind a thousand times more than it has been given. Behold every bowl of rice. There are miracles of life that are full of wonder.